Hello. Today we're gonna spend uh, some quality time discussing specifically business analytics as a precursor to operation and supply chain analytics. And as we are discussing business analytics, we will be also discussing business models, different type of business model and how they are used in business analytics. So let's start the presentation. This is a precursor presentation and a video related to business analytics as the operation and supply chain analytics is a part of business analytics. So business analytics and business model Specifically, we will start with uh, business analytics and its definition. Then we talk about the major fields, four major fields. The first is information management. Then we talk about descriptive analytics, predictive analytics, prescriptive analytics. When after discussing these four fields and some examples, we will talk about business models, different type of business model and we will give some examples and before we end this we will look at what is big data and how it's changing the field of business analytics and how to deal with business big data as specifically in the business analytics and prescriptive analytics domain. Wayne Weston has defined the business analytics as using data for better decision making. And business analytics is also defined as the use of data, information technology, statistical analysis, quantitative methods, or any mathematical or computer based models to help managers get improved insights about their business operations and make better fact-based decisions. So once you have all this data and this statistical analysis tools knowledge, you can get better insights about your business using this data and statistical analysis and then this will help you to make better decisions which in turn will be beneficial for your business. So nowadays we see business analytics is used in customer relationship, management, financial analysis, marketing related activities, operations, supply chain management area. So which is of, of your specific interest that operation supply chain analytics, human resource planning, pricing decisions, even for some strategies. Why there is a sudden interest in business analytics? First is the availability of data, availability of customer uh, computer software uh, to do sophisticated and quick analysis. But in turn, uh, actually business analytics has a strong relationship and it can affect positively affect the profitability of the business, revenue of the business, shareholder returns. It is also used for businesses to remain competitive and you can create very informative reports using business analytics. With a business analytic domain today we will be spending next 15 minutes talking about uh, our next four or five slides, talking about uh, data, database and data warehousing, that's a one com key components. And on top of once you have data and then you put in databases and then you do data warehousing techniques, then on top of it you run analytics 
analytics is of three types descriptive analytics it use descriptive statistics predictive analytics it use forecasting data mining method Pres and then finally the prescriptive analytics deals with management science and give you prescription about what is the best course of action and what decisions to take so data basically data with databases serve the foundation of business analytics data is the collected facts and figures so once you collected alpha numeric data about the facts and figure of the business it could be about customer it could be about partner it could be about your employee or it could be about different operations or the products then you get database this data is put into computer file and the collection is called database in database data is arranged in file format in table format and the information once you analyze this data in a database you get information and databases relational databases are very popular nowadays and you have to extract the information from the sources from different products customer from different operations and once you extract that information that alphanumeric information has to be transformed in the right format and then it loaded into databases so that analytics can make use of it basically four type of data are available based on the measurement scale in business we talk about categorical nominal data data is placed in categories according to some specific characteristics for example customer location it could be either of the continent america europe or asia or employee can be classified as manager supervisor associates so this type of data where different category exist based on specific character is called categorical data ordinal data its data is ranked in order according to some relationship to each other for example in a survey you can have five tick mark choices of poor average good very good or excellent and then these things are relatively ranked and a college football ranking there's no fixed unit of measurements like you measured it in kgs or you measured it in grams or something like it's a relative data and ranked accordingly this type of data is called ordinal data third data is interval data same as interval data is uh, ordinal data but with constant differences between observation for example temperature reading or sat score but what is of particular interest of us in statistical analysis is ratio data this is a continuous values has a natural zero point ratios are meaningful for example if you want in a business you want to say what is the monthly sales what is the delivery time what is the lead time what is the in a production cycle time and all these things they have a natural zero point and they are continuous values and they are meaningful in business context so once you have uh, data then you deal with the, you describe the data and this data can be described what are the main features of this data you is we use descriptive analytics for that and common tools within descriptive analytics are uh, some descriptive statistics measurements which are mean median mode standard deviation range variances range quartiles and frequency sampling is also used here and you can display the results either in graph charts summary statistics tables and once you know what is the current status what this of the organization 
using the descriptive analytics you can use uh, predictive analytics about uh, conclusion and you can predict the future behavior or future performance based on predictive analytics and common tools in PRISP are uh, in this is basically a forecasting such as time series and causal relationships and you can also do some cluster analysis association analysis regression logistic decision, decision tree method, neural net, text mining. These are the common tools in predictive analytics. We talk about prescriptive analytics. So once you know what is the current status using of the organization, using the descriptive analytic, use, you can predict some future performance or future behavior using predictive, then you can make take make decisions if you want to make decision what is the best course of action you can use prescriptive analytic and make decision based on data some common model which are used in prescriptive analytics are linear programming non-linear programming sensitivity analysis integer programming goal programming all these are used as stochastic in nature where variables are uh, known or value are measured but sometimes the variables are random in nature they can take unpredictable values so we use simulation modeling in prescriptive analytics now next is how to implement business analytics to derive some meaningful benefits for your organization so I suggest our uh, eight step methods which is understand the company's product and customer so once you know the company's business it's what are different products it's using who are the customer then you can retrieve the meaningful data about these product customer or the operations So once you have tracking mechanism, then you get this data from across the organization. And once you collect the data, then you put some this load this data into a data warehouse and run some statistical analysis on this data. And then you put business intelligence to standardize the report get some informative reports and in this report you will see you can even use most analytic functions on top of this information to discover some patterns and from these patterns you obtain some insights because whatever how good the business analytics is it's gives you an output and based on your domain knowledge or based on your uh, knowledge of the particular business situation or the context you drive an insight and you extract the relevant information or the knowledge from those patterns once you have the knowledge then basically you derive the value and derive the value is only where you can drive the value when you make the decisions So once you have, uh, so this is about uh, business analytics and how business analytics can help you make uh, better decisions and you can derive value from business analytics. Uh, we're going to spend some time to discuss the business models. So normally when we have to study a system we would we can work on the real system but it's very expensive costly and it's not always practical to work on the real system idea and object so we work on it's better to work on abstraction or representation of real system and 
but it captures the most important features of the real system. It could be in form of written or verbal description, visual display, or in general in business, it's mathematical formula spreadsheet representation. And a decision model is a model that is used for decision making. It is used to understand, analyze, and facilitate decision making. So I'll give you some specific examples where you can uh, you can see that how decision models are used in the business. For example, in a grocery store, uh, you are if you are selling a product you have a product that you want to sell across the different grocery store and you if you are from if you're a brand manager for that particular product you need to know how to use price best use pricing discount coupon and pricing strategy to influence sales so you can ask a business analyst and this business analyst is using business analytics it can develop a model that predicts sales of that particular product across the stores using as a function of price coupons and advertising so business analyst he look at the weekly data over that this is historical data and then you have the sales across the multiple store and it says effect of price coupon and advertisements on the sale and he came up with this based on historical data he did a regression and he came up with this formula that says that sales is a function of 500 minus 0 0.05 price in dollars into 30 into coupons 1 or 0 yes or no plus 0 0.08 advertising, advertising dollars plus 0.25 price in dollars into advertising dollars so you can see here when the price is 6.99 there's no coupon advertising is 0 price is approximately 501 but when when the coupon comes in the same thing that there's an increase and when we say that uh, when advertisements also kick in we see a large increase so, but when the price is reduced or uh, when the price is increased it increases further so it's, it should use the price increase in combination of advertisement and coup discount couponing but if we don't do that if the price goes down then the coupon is there when advertisement is there actually the sales are going down so this thing this formula is derived this equation is derived and it can be used to predict the future sales based on the use of advertisement coupling and the pricing strategy first thing is the descriptive decision models and descriptive decision models simply tell what is and describe the relationship they do not tell managers what to do for example a mathematical form a model descript descriptive model for total cost the total cost is fixed cost plus variable unit cost into quantity produced graphically it is shown here fixed cost plus variable cost variable cost itself is a function of unit variable cost multiplied by quantity produced so it doesn't tell manager what to do it is just explain how what is total cost is a sum of fixed and variable cost but predictive decision model they aim to predict what will happen in the future most common is uh, forecasting time series or uh, 
time series forecasting but whenever you forecast something when you predict something that will happen in the future it has uncertainty and the risk and uncertainty is like what will happen in the future so you know so there is always imperfect knowledge because there is always a predictive value plus error and because of this risk is associated because if you take an action based on predicted value and there is always you cannot have 100% correct prediction there is always an error there is always a risk associated that is predictive decision model one example is uh, nonlinear demand prediction where demand is function of 20,000 into price raised to the power minus 0 0.03 so you can you can this is a predictive you can predict the demand based on the past data about price and and what's gonna be the price that you were planning to charge in the future you can predict the demand Next is a perspective decision models help decision. This is something we're going to spend uh, at least four to five future video sessions where we'll discuss about prescriptive decision model dealing with uh, optimization and simulation model. And in optimization, these prescriptive models help decision maker identify the best solution. So, among the multiple solutions, what is the most optimal or the best solution? In optimization, we try to find out decision variables that minimizes or maximizes an objective function. So, objective function uh, maximizes the quantity of interest. Of course, this is the quantity of interest. Normally, it is cost, profit, or some goal. Constraints are normally when you have constraint, resource constraint, time constraint. These constraints are limitation or restrictions. And optimal solution is the value of decision variable at the minimum maximum point of the objective function. So, in optimization, uh, we try to always find the values of decision variables at the optimum point which is the maximum minimum of objective function these thing models are descriptive in nature when inputs are known with certainty but sometimes the inputs are random input variable then we deal with stochastic prescriptive model one example is firm want to know what best pricing and it's want to maximize the revenue Revenue is function of price into sales, where sales itself is a function of price. So we want to identify the price with a decision variable that will maximize total revenue. This is our objective function, sub subject to a constraint in terms of it could be an amount of sales, maximum sales because of production capacity or it could be a maximum price range, maximum minimum price range. So these could be a constraint that exists. So this is just one example of prescriptive decision model. And logarithms are uh, also, we have a we will have a session on a logarithm. is a systematic procedure used to find optimal solution to decision models. So when we talk about computers, we will we have systematic procedures and they are called logarithms and uh, we will have a session on to speak more specifically in detail about this. As I previously mentioned in the 8 step method how business analytics is used for bis in businesses to derive value. 
so let's look at how business model similar thing more or less sim similar rep reputation of the thing if you want to solve a problem business analytics is just part of problem solving or decision making there are a lot of other things which are involved beside business analytics in the decision making or problem solving but if you're using business analytics of course these step, six steps are useful first is you recognize the problem is the gap or some performance issue or behavior issues then you define the problem what are the different variables in the problem then you structure the problem you structure the problem in terms of mathematical model or logical model and then you analyze it using a statistical analysis tool put some data into it and then analyze the problem based on that you will get some results you interpret this result based on particular domain on contextual knowledge and then you make a uh, business decisions once you make a business decision then you implement it in your business and then once you implement a business you derive the benefit of the value one example like how to, when alert using analytics in the real business uh, it has to be taken with a pinch of salt so for example analytics at HP they look whether analytics will solve the particular business problem is the existing solution already exist or do they have to develop a new business model or decision model that is needed and once they are sure about it and when they they use work on prototype rather than real system they build insights into data and into the and into the statistical uh, output rather than using it a black box they want to keep they have a lot of independent variable decision variables and uh, but they don't want to do not put a lot of complexity they want to make the thing simple and because whatever solution whatever service they are doing it for end customer they partner with end user in the discovery and design of this of the statistical decision model and statistical analysis and they have analytical champion who will always give an analytic perspective to the different business issues and problem business big data is uh, okay now we have dealt with so far we have dealt with what is business analytics uh, what are the different four components of business analytics then we talked about uh, descriptive prescriptive and then we talked about business model and different type of business model and now before we finish this presentation I want to talk about uh, big data because big data is now the recent thing which has become a reality and it's changing the domain of analytics so so far we had structure in-house operational databases and we can but beside this now we also have external databases and And then we have plus a lot of information is automatically captured For example is a point of sale and then we are getting a lot of data which is non structured data from social networks web servers web pages web server logs and then they are combined into all this is combined into non normalized data warehouse schema and then we use different a little bit different techniques and technology to deal with big data and the analytics the three V's of big data is which are very popular and in within perspective analytics to context how to handle these three V's first V is the volume volume is quite high com compared to conventional relation data places but it is rather than hindrance it is benefiting the descriptive predictive and prescriptive because you have a lot of data and this data can be used to do descriptive predictive and prescriptive analytics and decision modeling velocity big data has a lot of velocity the rate at which data changes or data flows is quite high so to deal with it prescriptive model they will run in the background and take data from input to make not always an optimal data but near optimal de decisions and optimal solutions near optimal solution and variety is that different data sources in different format right uh, so because of that 
normally when you use a management size model or prescriptive models you look at additional layer to make input data uniform in nature so that you can run the you know the prescriptive model on top of it and get gather some insights and take business decisions so thank you that's it for uh, this session this session we talk about uh, what is business analytics because and then because it is uh, the 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 particular uh, subject that we going to talk is operation and supply chain analytics it lies within the big domain of business analytics then we look at uh, what are components of business analytics and then we talked about business model and different type of business model and finally we talk about big data and how it's going to for we get to an example of prescriptive analytics and how to handle big data in perspective analysis. so we're going to have some more i hope you like this video we have some more uh, interesting videos coming on where we take uh, we not only do the ppt presentation we'll be working on excel we will working on r and we do the hands on on different tricks and techniques and uh, to do descriptive analytics using data analytics tool pack of microsoft excel to do forecasting to do regression analysis then we'll be using solver add in in microsoft excel to deal with prescriptive analytics linear programming non linear goal programming etc and then we'll be running with, uh, with the random number generation to deal with simulation modeling so i hope uh, you like this video and continue to watch the future videos and presentations which will be more hands on and covering much more interesting topics within the domain of operation and supply chain